Um, if you're um down here right now, who's driving the ship? <laughs> That's a good question. The question is, if I'm here and Saul is here, because I've been training him forever. Now, um, uh, actually, I have uh, my second in command, the staff captain, is, is up there right now. Yeah, so uh, there's, uh, and I, I'm the real captain, but I have, have a, a good assistant, and he is. Uh, when I'm not up there, then he's there. There's always someone on the bridge, right? So, yep, down here in the front. Hey, Cap, uh, quick question. Actually, two. My wife has a question. Fully capacity or fully loaded, what is the draft below the waterline? Or? Uh, we're about uh, 26 feet, 8.1 meters. <laughs> okay, and you have a lot of functions on the ship. You're responsible for a lot of different divisions. Your immediate staff that reports to you, how many, can you just uh, briefly go over the divisions that report to you? Um, yeah, so basically we have three departments uh, on the ship, so we have the, the navigation department, the engine department and the hotel department and uh, so there's, there's uh, and, and then we have actually an environmental officer that oversees the environmental aspects of, of all those three departments, uh, but, but we have three main, uh, main departments and then every department has a sub-department, like the hotel has housekeeping, entertainment, uh, culinary department, beverage department. Etc. So, so then it goes down to like a, a tree of reports that go to that. The, the total in the navigation is about uh, 65 people, engine room is about 80 people, and uh, the rest is hotel. So there's uh, about 800 uh, people in the hotel department work for the hotel director. And then the all direct report straight into the captain. Yes, yeah, so it all ties back in from there. Yep. <coughs> So I have two questions for you. The first one is, has there ever been anybody that has jumped over the ship? Mm. And then the second question is, has there ever been anything that was scary to you in all your shipping days that has happened to the vessel to where you guys have had to take immediate action stage two or stage three? Uh, well, I don't think anybody's ever jumped over the ship, but, uh, but they have jumped off the ship. <laughs> we, uh, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, no, it's, well, actually, it's not quite true. But one time in uh, in Vancouver, a guy tried to jump off the Lionsgate Bridge on the ship, mm. but he missed, so he, he actually did jump over the ship. So, <laughs> there you go. So, it was not a good day for that guy. That's <laughs> one way you got a free cruise yeah. right there. So, right? so, but, but uh, I, I actually... Uh, I mean, I've, I've seen pretty much every, uh, every possible way of somebody uh, jumping off the ship or, or we found an interesting story we found years ago, there, there was a, we were sailing out of the Panama Canal, just had a busy day there and it, it was uh, pitch dark, probably about 10 o'clock at night, new moon, no light, nothing and a uh, passenger reported said that I've seen somebody in the water and uh, so uh, Okay, are you sure? Yeah, yeah, he was waving and shouting and everything. Okay, so then we, we uh, activated our, uh, our our organization and uh, stopped the ship, turned around, uh, lowered the boat, started searching, trying to find out who on the ship could be off. And so we interviewed the guy and uh, he's, he was somewhere near the bow of the ship, so we're like, okay, it's, it's still it's very strange. Eventually we found this guy, we searched for about two and a half hours or so, and uh, there you go, cell service. <laughs> Welcome to the world. The, uh, so we found the guy and, uh, and took him on board and uh, we, we resumed our course. We put him in a, in a cabin and kept him there. We took his fingerprints, sent his fingerprints to the FBI because you, you don't know, he, he didn't come from our ship. So we jumped off a ship ahead of us somewhere. and. Uh, so we kept him there for a couple of days, and then the FBI came back. Uh, okay, we've identified this uh, this person. He uh, he'd uh, come aboard to some freighter in Tampa, and uh, he uh, he thought he was on his way to Africa. And when he uh, went through the canal, he stowed he literally stowed away on this cargo ship. When he uh, figured out that he was going the wrong way, he 
saw the lights on the shore and thought he could swim for it. Well, so his luck was that oh, most of the ship coming out of the canal followed the same route and, and we just happened to be the next ship coming by because otherwise he probably would have died. So anyway, knowing this, that he wasn't an ex-murderer or anything like that, we uh, said, okay, maybe you want to uh, get some fresh air. So we walked him around the deck and uh, what does the idiot do? He came to the back, he jumped again. <laughs> yes. Yes, this happened. So um, so anyway, but we had a guy with him, so uh, he immediately stopped the ship. I mean, because you can't just uh, let somebody swim uh, to his demise. So um, stopped the ship, lowered the boat, tried to get him, and uh, in, the, in the cabin we found a, a little note that says, hey, Captain, your ship is great, but uh, I really don't see the point in this. So that's kind of his, uh, his state of mind. And it is very, I, I tell you, it is very hard with a lifeboat to uh, to go get somebody that does not want to come to that lifeboat. So it's very easy to swim away. So we tried knocking him on the head with an oar, and, uh, all kinds of things to try and get this guy to, to comply. So we said, you know, this is not, we're not going to get this guy unless we uh, put swimmers in the water. So we, we looked around the crew, who, who the biggest, two biggest guys were. He said, okay, but the, call the boat back, and these guys were going out in their speedos, and uh, yeah, pretty scary. <laughs> so we, uh, we send them out, and in the meantime, the guy thought that we, we were going to leave him because the boat was recalled, so by the time we got back to him, he actually uh, changed his mind and, uh, and came willingly, so they didn't actually have to go in the water to go get him, but we didn't let him out of his cabin after that. So, uh, so that was a, that was good. That was just last week, right? <laughs> no, no. Well, this was about uh, 20, 25 years ago. Wow. So, yeah. uh, funny enough, so we, we came uh, into LA and the Coast Guard came to pick him up and at the gate of the port they let him go. <laughs> yeah. They did, never did anything to the guy. Is he the what? He's in the break. Uh, yeah, we didn't let them out. We uh, we do have a brick, yeah. We can lock you up if you misbehave. <laughs> All right, just down here, yeah? Firstly, do you slow down in the fog? Second question is... Do we slow what? Do you slow down in a fog? Uh, it depends on the traffic situation. Secondly, is the Costa Concordia accident in the Mediterranean, did that change the way you do things on cruise ships? Um, it, it sure made us look at our operations and, and uh, sharpen some things and, and change some operations around, yes, for sure. Over here, on the stairs. Hey, Captain, I thought the uh, Azipod system eliminated most of the vibration from a ship versus a straight shaft drive. Comment on that? Is there any big advantage to the Azipod versus the straight shaft? Um, the short answer is no. The, the, when we uh, our first our first uh, Azipod ship was the Amsterdam, and then the, the second one Zuiderdam, they they experienced tremendous vibration in the dining room when they were going higher speeds. Um, the way they solve this is by installing. Uh, basically a bubble compressor under the stern. So we have a big air compressor and, and, uh, and they drilled uh, like a hundred million holes in the, in the stern and we pump an air through that. So actually under the, under the back end of the ship there is a big air cushion and that takes care of the vibration of the ship. So on the Zuiderdam they retrofitted that but on all the ships since then they have had that. And actually they are now experimenting with ships that, that have that technology all alongside the ship. So actually there's a bubble compressor in the front and the middle and the, and the back to reduce uh, uh, vibration. And so basically we're like a big truck with the air suspension. All right, Chris, down here, yeah? I would like to know your water supply. Do you reverse osmosis or you take on potable water at the, at the dock? Uh, all of the above. 
the uh, the ship has uh, two evaporators, so we, we actually uh, evaporate seawater at a, a lower temperature at, at a, the, the vacuum evaporator. So over a vacuum, water boils at a lower temperature. We uh, take that uh, that steam off and condense it, and then it's fresh water. We have a reverse osmosis system, which is basically a filter system. You just think of a big coffee filter. We put seawater in and uh, all the salt stays behind and fresh water comes out the other end and then uh, especially here in Alaska the, we have plenty of rain as you may have noticed and uh, so, so the, the ports are very generous with that they, uh, uh, most of them have 500 dollar flat fee we can take as much water as we want just up here in the middle I have two questions the first one is how much does how much dollars does it take to make a cruise ship? Um, the cost of the Eurodam is about 700, mi 700 million. And my second question is why are there floor names like that? The floor names. <laughs> the, the, uh, I don't know, I didn't make that up. The, the navigation deck I can figure out, and the rest of them. Somebody smart to have thought of that. <laughs> it's a good question. I'll ask the boss when he comes in a couple of weeks. Yeah, good question indeed. Uh, Chris, where have you gone? You're in the middle. Yep. If you wanted to bring someone on board, like a family member, um, would they have to pay for the cruise, or do you have a plus one, so to speak? Um, a, a what situation? <laughs> plus one. Oh, um, well, uh, like my wife is coming in, in two weeks, I can, I can bring her and uh, she can stay in my cabin and I can actually take one more person uh, uh, with me uh, in the cabin, so I can actually have two persons in the cabin, so whether that's uh, one of my kids or uh, somebody else that, that works out. And then we have a, a company uh, program that, that, can, uh, that allows relatives to sell at a reduced rate, yes. So, a bit of both right here. When this cruise is over, how long does it take to refit and reload the ship? Um, the cabins will be ready at, uh, at noon on Saturday. Mm. So, it, 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 we literally, we come in at about 6 in the morning, we'll be docked and uh, they'll, they'll start unloading the luggage, start loading stores and uh, provisions and uh, by, by noon you will start embarking, the cabins will be ready and uh, the loading is usually finished by about 2-3 o'clock in, in the afternoon. Yep, up here with Chris. How many captains does the uh, Holland American Line employ and how many of them are female? Hmm? <laughs> um, the, the, yeah, that's a good, well, the last question is right now zero. The, we had uh, we had one female staff captain, but she uh, she just quit last year. Mm -hmm. the, the, we have probably about thirty four captains altogether. Uh, yep, over here again. Do you ever get seasick? <laughs> no, and my wife hates that. Because <laughs> uh, the ship may be moving and it's like, uh, well, do something about that. But uh, to, me it's, to me it starts getting bad when the TV starts flying. So, so my, uh, my level is a little bit different. So, but, but actually, uh, I've been emailing with one of my colleagues and he does get seasick. Yeah, yeah, Captain Boss on the Northern gets terribly seasick, but his ship goes to, to Australia, which has the worst waters in the world. So I don't know why he likes that so much. I'm not quite sure. <coughs> Lots of apples and ginger ale. Yep, over here. No, that doesn't work. So <laughs> I don't know how to tell people that. <laughs> That's what I've heard. I've only seasick. heard these things. Okay, you know? okay. So. I don't get seasick, so I, I, I'm not quite sure uh, what actually it would be good, but, but my take on this is eat spaghetti. 
Yes. You said apples and ginger ale no. and spaghetti. No, the way. And, and I will tell you why. If you get seasick, your, your stomach produces all kinds of acids and stuff like that, and that's what comes up and that makes you even sicker. If you eat uh, carbohydrates, they actually absorb that acid. So if you have a good good uh, load in your in your stomach, that'll take care of, of that uh, that queasy feeling because you won't have the acid in your stomach. Yeah. Now, if you do get sick, it comes out much easier than the apple. <laughs> You heard it from the captain, everybody. Come here. All right, spaghetti it is. Always, pra always practical. Always practical. What is your schedule like? How many days are you on and how many off? Um, we work uh, about a three month schedule, so we're three months on, three months off. And um, basically, every day is different. So some days you start at uh, 7 o'clock in the morning. A little email and uh, go on an inspection round, uh, have some kind of meeting, uh, talk to passengers, do something like that, uh, talk to ship, and, uh, and yeah, so, so uh, it's every day is something, and especially here in Alaska, the hours are very much different than, uh, than just nine to five. Where are we up the back up this time? Yep. My question is kind of similar. Uh, do you ever feel like home like do you sail for a certain amount of like months or years and then go home for a certain amount of time yeah so we work for three months and then and then we go home for three months and then my wife makes me work for three months <laughs> Chris, yeah. uh, i've noticed that there have been crews looks like they're putting paint on the ship are they actually painting or is it some type of a covering and how often is the aerodrome completely repainted or refurbished exteriorly? Um, yeah, they, they are actually painting and uh, the, um, the reason for that is, is a, of course,